Hello everyone and welcome to a new video of Most Robotics. This time in English because we will make it uh, also for the whole yellow skin community. And today we will explain you everything about the uh, Surveyor Ultra 3 and we will do a short uh, video series about uh, the unboxing of the scanner system, uh, get started, um, application in the field and also data analysis. So keep updated uh, and follow us on YouTube and LinkedIn uh, to check out our new videos. Yeah, okay, let's start with the unboxing. Again, this scanner is like the Mapper Plus uh, and the Mapper in the yellow scan backpack, which is very comfortable to, to carry with the drone and uh, on the back uh, in the field. So we will open and uh, see what's inside. So first of all, we have our scanner system. Um, then we have the charger. We have two batteries. One antenna, two USB sticks, and uh, enough antenna cable. One long one and one shorter. So one meter and 50 centimeters. As standard, we will also have some new dampeners for the M350 uh, mount with the Skyport. Uh, I will explain later where the difference are. Then we have a tissue to clean also our scanner uh, lens. And uh, if we have dust on it, uh, it's very easy to clean with the delivered. Um, package. What's not standard is the different mounting options. Uh, this is a different topic in the video later and uh, yeah we have the option to change it that's why this is also in our package today. Uh, then we have some USB drives uh, also for our calibration files. This is our uh, antenna mount for the standard M300, M350 so we can also place the antenna here. Um, for our today video, we started using the uh, Gram ZT3 mounting bracket for the M350, which also includes a damped antenna mast, so we don't use this this time. Yeah, in general, this is all. We will have some more documentation and calibration um, documents in the box as well. So all of the scanners coming from Yellowskin are completely uh, calibrated in France uh, with a, a special flight and here we will have all of our uh, calibration certificates and uh, our contact person and so on. So this is very helpful also for uh, delivering data to official authorities and so on. It's always helpful to deliver the calibration file as well. So now we are coming to the specs of this scanner system. Um, some of you will maybe know the Surveyor Ultra 2, which we already sold in the, in the past and uh, used it a lot. Um, yeah, but what is the difference to the Surveyor Ultra 3? So right now here, you can see it on the housing. It is round. Yeah, we have the same scanner head, but different changes. One of the biggest changes is the IMU. So the Surveyor Ultra 2 was uh, a combination of the Hesai scanner, uh, scanner head, uh, LiDAR head, in combination with the Aplanix APX15. Now we have the SPG uh, Micro um, IMU inside the Surveyor Ultra 3. Furthermore, we have additionally uh, a different uh, mounting point, and which is also new is the embedded camera. So we can also colorize our point clouds uh, without an external camera module. So technically we have 640,000 shots per second. Um, we have a field of view of 360 degrees by 40.2 degrees um, yeah, front and backwards. This means that we are uh, yeah, also scanning uh, in different directions, directions which will help us in several applications. Yeah, then we also have the battery system uh, included. We have the opportunity to mount uh, the camera modules and there's also something new. Maybe you've seen it in our video of the Intergeo where the scanner was released. There we have the option with the normal 20 megapixel uh, camera module. Um, we can combine this uh, with the uh, dual camera and this is two times the 
20 megapixel camera with a little bit overlap so we will reach uh, nearly 120 degrees of field of view um, which helps us to colorize the point cloud um, much better when we have a, a rotating scanner head. Yeah, and the highest camera module we can mount is the 60 megapixel um, camera module. Uh, so we can now also um, export auto photos directly uh, processed in our cloud station and um, yeah, with the same accuracy as our LiDAR data because we are using the uh, orientation, the external orient orientation file of the IMU to georeference our auto photo. Connectivity, we will have the data connectivity plug here and we will have uh, also the uh, antenna mounting here. Most of our customers are asking us uh, yeah, how precise is the scanner. Therefore I explained the difference between accuracy and precision in previous videos. So for now this scanner has 3 cm um, precision and 2.5 cm accuracy at 80 meters flight height which is very yeah, flexible um, and uh, pregnant for this uh, product. As lower we are flying, as more precise is our scanner. So we did some tests and when we are flying under 40, 40 meters flight height, we are at a precision under one centimeter, which is very good. So yeah, the biggest effort is to cover a large area because we can use the 120 uh, degree field of view. And when we don't need that, precise point clouds like in forestry when we just want to see the ground points in, in a forest or something like that and just have big areas to, to cover. Then we will fly higher but sometimes for example for um, railroads and power lines and so on then we can fly much closer to our objects and uh, reaching very good results so that's a big effort for that. Yeah, The maximum range of this scanner is 100 up to 120 meters uh, this depends on, on our reflection of our objects. When you have, for example, coal mines or something like this, this is black reflecting uh, surface. That's not that good, therefore you have to fly lower. But in general, um, our missions are normally between 30 and 70 meters flight height. So yeah, for us, a very good flexible system. One more parameter of this system is the weight. So we have a very lightweight scanner system here uh, which means we are under one kilogram um, which allows us a lot of flight time also with smaller drones but uh, as well with bigger drones. So my colleague uh, Stefan was uh, for example in, in the Netherlands and uh, did 400 he hectares with an Ace Noir and just needed several flights because uh, the flight time is very large, so we are about 45 minutes up to 50 minutes with this system under A score uh, NOAA. Um, yeah, so that's why it also comes uh, in, in different OEM versions, but this will be a different video where I explain the difference between the OEM products of Yellowscan and our standard solutions. Yeah, one more big effort about this scanner is not only that we can use it on several drones like DJI drones uh, because of the lightweight, uh, on bigger drones like Ace Konoa, uh, Hexadrone Tundra and so on. The fact that we can mount it on the car is very, very important because often our customers are comparing this scanner system with cheaper ones and uh, are asking where is the big effort and here we can say if there's a situation where we can't fly because authorities are not allowing it, weather conditions and other stuff, then we can just mount it in our fly and drive pod, put it on the car and then we can drive. For example, our customer um, Land Schleswig-Holstein, Küstenschutz, um, these are yeah, the authority for our German coast. They are using the Survey Ultra 2 uh, to map our dams and so on and also after storms they are checking the beaches of Germany with a drone but also when they can't fly uh, they will uh, use the car to map these beaches. Yeah, For the mounting of the Surveyor Ultra 3 on our drones so we have different options to carry it. Um, normally as platforms we at Most Robotics are using the uh, Ace Core Zoe, Ace Core Noah 
the Hexadrone Tundra, um, but also the M350 is uh, always a good choice uh, for several universities which already have uh, some drones and uh, yeah, kind of that. Uh, therefore, the scanner system is very flexible to use because we can just change the quick release, which is on top of the scanner, uh, with four screws. So you can see here there's a connector and we will just replace the four screws, screw it off, uh, plug the other one in and then we can just mount it on the sky port of the M300, M350 uh, with the normal quick release, like on the P1 or L1 and to uh, the normal payloads of the uh, DJI M350. Then we have the Gramsci quick release, which is right now mounted here. And this one is normally for our Pixhawk based drones, um, so like the um, Ace Core uh, drones or Hexadron drones. Then we have the combination when we, for example, use our Mapper Plus, which is right now here. We ordered directly with the Bramsey quick release, but there we don't have the option to, to change it. So for us, it was very simple that Yellowscan delivered a solution for that. So we also have a new mounting bracket, which is directly developed for the M350. And this includes our Gramsci quick release. So now we can use our old scanner system, the Skyport quick release, and um, yeah, just use the Gramsci quick release directly under the drone. The good thing about this mounting bracket is that we can, um, that the antenna mast is also connected to the dampening system, which means when we are flying very fast or uh, have to stop very abrupt or very spontaneously, our GNSS data will not uh, be off-centered or our lever arms are not changing while we are flying because every time the scanner is moving, our antenna is moving as well. So these two facts were the decision for us uh, to use this mounting bracket on the M350. But later I will show you how this looks with a normal Skyport. One fact more is that this quick release is much stiffer and much heavier uh, to carry bigger cameras, external cameras um, on this scanner. When we don't want to use the embedded camera, which has eight megapixels, um, yeah, therefore it's very helpful uh, to use this mounting bracket. Yeah, so now we will uh, rebuild the drone with our mounting brackets. So I will change uh, from the Gramsci uh, mounting bracket to the Skyport mounting bracket to show you how fast also that would be if you wanted to change it. Um, yeah, therefore we will start rebuilding it. After we uh, changed the four screws, we can now put the Gramsci, uh, the Skyport quick release under it as usual. Yeah, so now we are done and we can mount the Skyport with the scanner system. Yeah, after we change the mounting brackets, it's very important uh, to set up our uh, lever arms. And therefore, Stefan will join us and he will explain you how you are measuring the lever arms and what it's about. Hi, my name is Stefan and I'm the pilot. I'm going to show you how to measure the lever arms between the scanner and the GNSS antenna. We have the x-axis, which is the position of the antenna back or in front of the scanner. We have the y-axis, which is the position of the antenna left or right of the scanner. And we have the z-axis, which is the antenna, the position of the antenna above or below the scanner. For the measurement, I'm going to use a simple measurement stick and this laser tool that helps me finding the center spots of the points that I want to measure. So I'm using my laser tool here to find the center point of the GNSS antenna. It's uh, right about there. Again, the measurement stick is not the most precise tool, so it's gonna be plus minus a millimeter or two, which is totally fine. So you can estimate the center of the scanner head 
like that, and then measure the distance to the center of the GNSS antenna, or you take the edge of the scanner, like that, which is now 7.9 centimeters, and then I measure the actual depth of the scanner, which is 4.2, half of that is 2.1, and 7.9 centimeters deducted by 2.1 centimeters is uh, 5.8 centimeters. The measure arms are given in meters, so it's going to be 0.058 meters. And since the antenna is behind the scanner, it's going to be a negative value. So the all-in-all -all value for the X lever arm is going to be minus 0.05 meters. Then we have the y-axis. The y-axis is measuring if the antenna is left or right. I'm looking for the center of the drone. And I'm measuring the distance from the center of the drone to the center of the GNSS antenna because I know the scanner is mounted underneath the drone right in the center. Last but not least is the distance of the antenna above the scanner, which is the z-axis. I'm measuring to the bottom of the antenna from the middle of the scanner. This is about 30.4 centimeters. A helpful thing to do is to align the drone parallel to some table edges. So you can also align your laser tool parallel to the table edges and you can, make, can be sure that you can be as accurate as possible. Finally, we are going to measure the z-axis. The z-axis describes the position of the antenna uh, above or below the scanner. For that, again, we measure from the middle of the scanner towards the face center of the antenna, which is somewhere here. We know the value for this antenna is 3.2 centimeters, so we're just going to measure to the bottom of the antenna and then add these 3.2 centimeters. A helpful tip for that is just use a flat surface. So I'm just going to measure down from this point to the table which is 41.6 centimeters. And then I'm taking the middle of the scanner to the table, which is about 11.3 centimeters. I deduct these values and I will arrive at a value of 30.4 centimeters. And then I add the face center for the AV18. This is the GNSS antenna and I have my Z value. Again, negative, because the scanner is underneath the GNSS antenna. Yeah, thank you, Stefan, for measuring our lever arms. Thank you very much. And uh, now where we have the values uh, listed in our Excel uh, sheet, we will place the values um, inside our smartphone app to uh, the scanner system. And yeah, now we are ready to go. Um, everything is set it up and we will um, see you in the next video out in the field, collecting some data, and uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye. Bye.